Hey friends, my local school asked me to do a video on how I got into engineering and some of the projects that I've worked on. Because I'm a YouTuber, I said yes, of course, and I want to make it the fanciest video they've ever seen. Hey, so Mr North asked me to do a quick video on how I got into engineering, what sort of jobs I've done in the engineering, and then in the end, we'll get to the race cars and stuff. First things first, how many different types of engineering can you think of? So I'm gonna pause here and let you yell them out to the screen. Good job. Possibly didn't yell them at the screen, but how many different types of engineers did you think of? Possibly not the best source for this. But when I looked at engineering jobs, they listed 45 different types of engineering. That's 45 different types of engineering. So if you don't like mechanical engineering, you could be a medical engineer. If you don't want to be a structural engineer, you can be an electrical engineer. You can be a chemical engineer. You can be whatever you want. And they're so different. One of my friends, Anna Maria, is a medical engineer. So medical engineers look at prosthetic legs and, you know, uh, kidney kidney machines and those sorts of things. My other friend, she's a civil engineer and she looks at bridges and buildings and those sorts of things. I know some chemical engineers and electrical engineers. There are so many different types of engineering. An engineer is defined as a person who can design and build a machine, a machine or structure. So which type am I? I'm a mechanical engineer. So a mechanical engineer is different than a mechanic. As life as a mechanical engineer, I would look at drawings and testing in labs. For example, I was in I was involved in Formula Student where I looked and designed an impact attenuator which is the crash zone at the front of a car. I then went to see it being crash tested and see whether it would pass the safety aspects of it. And then it was put on the car and it was actually driven around Silverstone. Now we didn't win, but it was a really good learning experience. And that's what a typical mechanical engineer would do. I have a few classic cars. As a mechanic, I learn how to fix them. So as a mechanical engineer, you're designing the products and those sorts of things. And as a mechanic, you are fixing someone else's design and you are fixing things and you've got to have that problem solving mentality for both of them. I got into being an engineer because I was trying to find, figure out how things work. I quite like maths, although I was never very good at it. I always had maths tutors and extra support in maths. And the science side of it, the physics side of it, I always, I quite liked, but also I just struggled in exams generally. I'm severely dyslexic, so, Exams were always tough, so I always worked so much harder for the exams. What route did I take into this engineering world? So there's different routes into engineering. You've got sixth form, which might lead to university or lead straight to work. You've got an apprenticeship, which could lead to university or it could lead to work. It's a whole cycle um, and there's no right route into engineering. There might be some pros and cons for you specifically, so my specific pathway to engineering was, I did my GCSEs, I think I was a B, I was like a C slash, I, I think I got like a B on one of my exams. I wasn't, I wasn't, I certainly wasn't an A plus student. Show you my age there slightly, as I know you don't have numbers, but you've got letters. I know you have letters. I know you now have numbers instead of letters. Um, I then went to college, so I went to my first college, didn't do very well, flunked all my exams, went to a different college, kind of got my act together a little bit. Um, so at the college I went to, they didn't offer engineering. They now do offer engineering and I do wonder if I would have taken that route um, rather than doing what I did, which was I did A-levels in maths, physics, computing. So that's the way I went. I then went to university I went to a university that studied automotive and mechanical engineering so that I could leave my options open a little bit. So then I did an MSc 
in mechanical engineering. So my PH, my MSc, I got a distinction and it's the first time I got a good grade in a sort of test type thing. And so I then thought, I might be slightly intelligent here um, and I got asked that million dollar question of what would you do if you had no money restrictions and I said I'd do a PhD, I liked researching things, I liked looking and investigating again that's the engineering mind in, that's the engineering brain in me it was just sort of working things out and wanting to know how things worked. So. I did a PhD, um, which means that you get to call me doctor. So I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. I finished it last year and I am I can now be called Dr. Quaintmere, which is a cool thing to say. Hello, my name is Dr. Quaintmere. I mean, how posh does that sound? And then in my pathway I then started to work so I've had a few jobs um, my PhD was in computational fluid dynamics which sounds fancy but basically fluid dynamics looks at both air and water and other fluids and it just sort of uses a computer program to predict the movement of the water and it produces these pretty pictures and when you show people these pretty pictures of what a fluid might do then they can look at their design and be like okay we understand what's happening here's how we can optimize it i really quite like fluid dynamics because you can work on a whole load of different projects you're not tied down to one thing i've worked with caravan people i've worked with boiler people i've worked with with, I've worked with crazy inventors that come with you and have an idea and they're like this is my idea what what's happening how does it work like is this actually physically possible and I then look at it and I show them the pictures and sometimes I can say it actually works and they're like okay I'm not crazy and sometimes you say mm. so I, I've worked for a toilet company before and you might think that's a really strange job but I loved it so I got to flush test toilet after toilet after toilet and really understand how the water moves around the toilet bowl. I loved working for the toilet company. We looked at the fluid dynamics of the bowl of how a toilet flushes and how the water moves and interacts and then joins together and those sorts of things. And it's a product that everybody uses every single day and if you can make it better if you can make it more hygienic if you can make it easier for the user if you can make it more aesthetically pleasing if you can make it so that it costs less like these are all the things that you have to be thinking about when you're designing something another part of the project was to look at a urinal and how they flush and how the water comes around when it flushes and I didn't even know that you rhinos flushed. Like, show that in the movies. And like, and it was that challenge of learning about these things and figuring it out. And then I had to simulate them. It does mean that I know what the toilets of the future will look like. But it's top secret. <gasps> there you years ahead of us. One thing I can show you is when I was doing simulations for the toilet, we had to think, what is it like? You can't just dive straight in. We looked at it and we found an experiment that had already been produced of a drop of water, of some water flowing down a glass, a slanted glass slope. And that was where I started from. I started on a really small, simple thing and I increased the complexity. That's how computational fluid dynamics works. I had this picture that somebody took in a lab and I managed to get the simulation to look like the picture. Now, this might look simple, but it took actual days to figure this out. That's enough about toilets, let's get back to it. So, as I hinted at the beginning, 
by day I am a mechanical engineer. In the evenings I do like to tinker with my classic cars. On weekends I'm a racing driver so I'm part of a local racing team and this has really helped me get the practical knowledge. So a lot of mechanical engineers are theory based or practical based and it's when you combine the two that you have a really great engineer. I have bought engines and stripped them in my parents' garden. Getting practical experience is really quite helpful. I'm now going to show you some fun clips of me being a racing driver and fixing car engines and stuff. I hope you weren't too bored by this. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you liked it.